Hey there, everybody. How's it going? This is Jackie Van Ham and my buddy Josh with this week's episode of On the Throttle. I am out here on the open road, Josh, bringing you stories while I'm out here traveling America, checking out some of the cool stuff going on in motorcycling. I just got back from Sturgis, which was fan. Fantastic, super good time. I'm here in beautiful Detroit filming some other features for some other Babcock's media publications out here. But I did want to go ahead, of course, and jump on and record today's show with you because there is all sorts of great stuff going on in motorcycling. I have got news from Royal Definitely. Enfield and beep, 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 beep. The news is here. Can-Am has finally released images of their very first foray into the e-bike game. Josh, what do you have going on in your neck of the woods? So when you hear BYOB, you think, yes, we're going to a party. <laughs> and this is the best type of party. If you ask me, I'm excited about this party. And if I'm excited about a party, you know it's something that's weird and totally not a party. On top of that, if your KTM or Husky needs new shoes, well, you just may be getting new shoes no matter what. So we'll get into both of those. <laughs> well, I can't wait to get into those stories and more after a word from our sponsor. From national forests to streaming waters, MoGo helps your customers experience the outdoors with confidence. Elevate their ride and your profits by offering MoGo's GPS tracking solutions. Help your customer get the most out of their motorcycles, power sports vehicles, and more with MoGo. DOWC is a rapidly growing service contract provider whose expansive line of FNI products includes Adventure Guard, specialty protection for power sports vehicles. Voted the number one Dealer's Choice Award dealer owned warranty company provider. Learn more about DOWC's customizable FNI offerings at DOWC.com. All right, so first things first, of course, huge thanks to our sponsors. These shows would not be possible without them. So nothing but love for our sponsors for today's program. And in my news for today, Josh, the very first thing I want to talk about is a bike that we have been teasing out, talking about. We've been, they, they talked about it like a couple of years ago. I think it was pre-COVID and it's finally appears to be here. The unicorn has arrived. And that is our friends over at Can am can am has finally finally launched these photos of their very first very first two-wheeled e-bikes brp announces two can am electric motorcycles for 2024. so brp the parent company of can am has contemplated return to motorcycles almost since it left two wheelers in 1987 that return was announced at its 2022 Reno Nevada dealer show where the company showed off two prototype e-motorcycles, the dual purpose Origin and the Naked Sport Bike Pulse. The announcement came with very few details of the bikes, though both are obviously part of a family with apparent commonality in battery pack and driveline. According to BRP, the Can-Am Origin is a throwback to the Can-Am TNT dual purpose motorcycle as capable off-road as on. While the Can-Am Pulse is perfect for rides in and out of the city, both feature the same high-performance LED headlights powered by a Rotax e-power, which I don't even know what that means because, Josh, Rotax, we're talking internal combustion en engine if we're talking Rotax, yes. right? I yep. know. So I am very curious about what's going on over here about this partner opportunity with another throwback brand, Rotax. So I'm really curious to see what's going to happen. They teased out these bikes at another one of their press launches, another one of their kind of corporate um, you know, launches, international launch parties. These were literally revealed in like, there was like smoke and mirrors and a light show going yeah. on behind them. It was very mysterious. There was very few images from it. And now finally that time has come. Josh, what do you think about these two images? The first two couple sneak, pe sneak peeks from some EV bikes from the folks over at Can-Am. I, I see so many things in this and there's there's a ton of great little clues in this because when I look at these, I mean, I see that they're kind of aimed at zero. Um, I also look at this, I mean, these are single sided swing arms. They're not big, heavy bikes. They've kept them very small and compact. So I'm assuming 
they're going more towards the commuter thing here, which I think is a great move because you're going to sell more commuter bikes because you can get in that at a decent price point instead of trying to sell something gargantuan that's going to go forever. This we talked about a few weeks ago, though, them and their acquisition of Great Wall Motor Austria, because, you know, Great Wall Motor sounds like a Austrian name instead of something <laughs> Chinese, but they, so nonetheless, it's that collaboration. I'm excited to see it. I mean, and for them to move Rotax in this direction, I mean, it's funny. Rotax makes so many engines for so many things. People don't really even know it. My Aprilia, the first Aprilia I owned was a Rotax motor bike, um, the Melee back 22 years ago. Um, dirt bike engines, go-kart engines, so many engines. So I'm excited. There's a lot of stuff. This is the beginning of great things. It definitely is. And you can sense, you can smell, uh, a pun intended, because it's EV, there's no smells. Uh, but you can smell that this is clearly going to be lar l part of a larger portfolio of motorcycles and of EV products. I mean, this is just such a massive company. You know they're going to be building yeah. all sorts of things based off of electric uh, and EV, EV power. So I'm really excited. I'm glad this finally came to some sort of fruition because it feels like it's it feels like it's we've been talking about this for five years now, it seems like. So it's cool to finally see these images. It's, it's a really exciting yes. time for the folks over at Can-Am. And you're right, Rotax. You know, I know the name Rotex more from flat track racing, which is definitely some way back conversation. So it is really interesting to hear that name brought forward again. Now, what do you have for your first story today, Josh? So I said BYOB, so everyone's going to think I'm talking about a party. And if you're into beta yeah! motorcycles, then <laughs> yes, it is a party. So they are coming out. It's on their website now. I spent quite a bit of time with it. Now, a few weeks ago, I talked about Husqvarna doing this thing where you can custom order your bike from the factory. And there was a number of different options. So of course, I mean, I'm a dreamer. I have to go through the beta website and do the build your own beta program. And I started scrolling through and there are a ton of options as you can see in the screenshot that I took here. So, I mean, whether you wanna do sprockets, whether you wanna do tires, whether you wanna do chain, there's all sorts of items that you can change fresh out of the factory doors. Because let's face it, in a lot of cases, you're going to buy the bike, you're going to get it home, and you're probably going to change something right off the rip and just go from there. One of the things that I really, really, really liked about this, though, is I started to dive through. I mean, you can put in a different exhaust on it, the recluse clutch kit, oil pump gears. You have the option to change the fork and shock spring rates. So many times when a new bike is reviewed, you hear, ah, the springs are too soft, the forks are too soft, it's not damped right. It's, I mean, we hear that so many times because let's face it, I am gonna need stiffer springs than Jackie is going to need. Um, the other thing is, is you can also <laughs> order it slightly lower, things of that nature. So to me, all of this is just wonderful steps in making sure that your bike shows up the way you want it to and the way it should. Now, one of the things, the way this is gonna be done is you go in and you order your parts and you order your motorcycle. You will be charged for the upgrades that you do and then you will also be charged for freight for the bike. So those are the two items that you put your credit card in and pay for right then and there. And you can see that here. So, I mean, obviously this it's a beta, it's a, it's a quality bike, it's gonna be expensive, but worth it. So those parts that you get, that you add on here, you will get a 20% discount on, because obviously they're not gonna be using some other parts from the bike. So to me, I think it's an awesome setup to make sure that your bike is gonna come with the right stuff you need. Once you place that order and you put in the discount code, your dealer will talk to you in the next few days and say, hey, look, it's scheduled to arrive here. How are you paying for the rest of this? Um, they're going to grab you by the ankles, shake you upside down and be like, look, give us the rest of your money. Um, to me, this is one step closer to this like boutique. I, I don't want to call it bespoke, but it's getting the bike that you want. It's getting the bike that you need. It's getting the bike that, hey, let's even look at forks. 
changing out front springs is not a big deal. But if it shows up from the factory with the right ones, you're less likely to ride on the wrong ones for the first two years you have the bike. To me, I think this is awesome with seeing this with Beta and Husqvarna. I think we're going to start seeing this more and more and more. The implications that this has on down the chain, I think, are going to become very interesting. What are your thoughts, Jackie? I mean, I'm assuming you're going for the lowering kit right off, right? <laughs> <laughs> well, first, first things first. I do, I do enjoy a good BYOB, Josh. So yes, if it's bring your yes. own, if it's bring your bring your own beta, I am here for it. No, I love this idea. I think this is, should have been happening for years. The fact you know that you can order cars this way now. I mean, anything that makes the consumer the consumer's life easier happier smoother i think is a huge win as far as sales go so it's going to be a yes for me as far as as far as this whole program and this happening this way and i've got no problem calling it bespoke a uh, beta is a boutique brand there's no ifs ands or buts about it they are a small brand why not make it be even more bespoke if you're going to order a high-end dirt bike why not make it be exactly what you want like i think that that is really really brilliant i would love to see more manufacturers larger manufacturers dipping their toe back into this water for a hot second in almost every brand's history they have toyed with this idea they've circled around it they've sniffed at it they've poked at it or they've tried to jump in on it um but for some reason it just has not been able to make it stick the pushback is that they feel like they're undercutting the dealership the dealership needs to make their money yada 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 I hear what they're saying, but then, you know, why not split the money with the local dealer because they're the ones who are going to be possibly doing the install and taking delivery of it anyway. So I think that there is definitely a middle ground opportunity here. I think that it is being a little bit overlooked. I wish that we were headed more this way. So that's my opinion on this whole BYOP ordering motorcycles like you order pizza. Uh, that's what I got to say about that. Now, for, for my second story, for my second story for today, and we're just gonna jump right into it. I'm out here on the street, man. I mean, people are like walking past. This is the real deal out here. But they know you're crazy. Great, they do know I'm crazy. It's fine. Uh, but there's a couple of really good stories this week, and they all centered around one company. And so I figured, why not tie yes. them all together and make it just be one one good story for today's show? It does have several different layers, though, and that is all things royal enfield is what we're talking about today royal enfield if you are not familiar is the largest motorcycle manufacturer in the world full stop that's right i said it and it's the truth they produce more motorcycles than any other company however here in the north america market they still are a little bit of a smaller player but that's because they absolutely crush overseas in their home asia market the bike on your screen right now was a little bit newer to me. Um, it hasn't been getting quite as much love, but they did just have their very first press rides. So I've seen this in the news all week. And this is the Royal Enfield have officially unveiled their new Hunter 350, a smart looking urban retro based on their J series platform. The Hunter will join the previous released Meteor and Classic in Royal Enfield's 350cc range in November in the UK. Compared to the Meteor's low slung and cruiser style, the Hunter Hunter is tall and poised with wider 17 inch alloy wheels front and rear and an 800 millimeter seat height. And fields say the Hunter has been designed with busy urban environments in mind so that it's compact geometry, nimble steering and confident braking. Providing the stopping power is a 300 millimeter fixed disc with twin piston floating caliper at the front, a single piston caliper in the back both come with abs this is really interesting news and quite a departure for the folks over at royal enfield josh look how modern look how sexy that bike is like but still with a little Agreed. bit of a retro vibe i thought that was super sharp and very very sexy so i thought that was really interesting and then the double whammy of the royal enfield story for this week was a little bit of crunching numbers and bean counting for the uk market they have been sooner to release some of their sales numbers than they are here in north america a lot of times those numbers are a tightly guarded secret but in the uk um, these numbers were just released. So Royal Enfield in the UK is enjoying a bumper year so far as global sales enjoyed, 
enjoyed double digit growth for the very first six months of 2022. While its fortunes in the vast, huge Indian market, which makes up around 80% of its overall sales, are ultimately integral to your Royal Enfield's overall figures, the combination of an industry-wide rebound in its native land in England and a big jump in overseas sales have spurned a 13.4 rise year-on-year -year globally. They are stimulated by the successful launch of the critical Meteor 350, which is that more retro cruiser style, which toppled the BMW R1250 GS Adventure from the top of the year to date UK sales charts. I thought that was super interesting, Josh. So did you just catch that? The Meteor yeah. 350, which is a smaller cruiser category bike, just knocked the great big huge behemoth GS1250 off of the top of the list in the UK. They're up 47.9% in the UK, where models like the Interceptor, Interceptor 650, which, which is its twin, have been popular for years now. Royal Enfield also posted again that 13.4 gains in Italy, 80% growth in Germany, and rather extraordinarily, 609% growth in Greece. Those are some really incredible numbers. Now, yeah. the rest of the UK sales breakdown, very, very interesting. Um, we will talk about that at a later date because they are really fascinating numbers, but I want to give Royal Enfield its own little space in the sun today and celebrate those massive growth that they've been having in the UK and I believe in North America. Again, I don't have the numbers for North America. They are not currently right. released, but those numbers for the UK market alone are very, very interesting. And and beep, 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 breaking news. Spy release photos were just released today. I didn't grab them in time to throw them in the show, but we'll do another show about it. But they were just released today about a adventure bike coming yep. from Royal Enfield. Not to be confused with their Himalayan dual sport machine. This is a true adventure bike coming from Royal right. Enfield. Josh, that was a lot of RE news. What do you think about what's going on over at Royal Enfield? So simply put, I mean, the, the people are speaking. Um, we, I mean, don't get me wrong. The G, the BMW GS sits in front of coffee shops. Amazing. I mean, is an amazing, <laughs> amazing adventure motorcycle. The problem Savage. is, is yes, 99.9% .9 of people that have that bike don't need it. What they need is they need something to buzz around town and go out and ride around in the country for a couple of hours instead of going away for three months at a time. When you can do this at this price point, you can get into having 98% of the fun at 30% of the price. Oh my God, yes. Royal Enfield, they, they've got it. Um, they, are on, they are exactly where the consumer needs them to be, and that's why they are going through the moon. Yeah. So, I mean, we are going to see a little bit different numbers for North America, a.k.a. U.S. market, because Correct. we don't use motor motorcycles like they do in Asia market and in European market, which is the numbers we're talking about today. Um, you're right. The smaller displacement machines, particularly in those two categories and those two yep. communities, make tons and tons and tons and tons of sense. I just thought it was especially shocking. Also, again, I'm going to keep hitting this nail on the head, but the fact that the BMW 1250GS was the number one sales in the UK, I thought that that was pretty extraordinary just yes. full stop. And then the fact that it got shoved off of that post by the much, much smaller, much, much, much less expensive 350 Meteor, I thought that that was really, really quite interesting. So really interesting yep. trends that we are seeing globally. Are they going to affect, are they going to really change or are they going to be, you know, as important numbers over here in the U.S.? We're all going to have to wait and see. But I think I think it's all very, very interesting um, and sure. very exciting. And of course, you you also nailed it on the head. They're making a great looking bike at a great looking price point that can, that fits way more consumers than a lot yep. of the larger bikes do. And I am here for it. I love this trend. I Agreed. support it. I love small bikes. You know that I do. So all good news, all high fives for the folks over at Royal Enfield. And I just wanted to give them a little bit of love on today's show. Now, what's going on for your second story today, Josh? So we've got some news for people that if you own a KTM or Husky that's been made in the past couple of years, there has been a recall put out for the Continental TKC 80s. Now, 
it is just with those with those bikes that came from the factory with those tires very often the factory will get slightly different tires than what ends up on the uh, on the parts shelf i guess it will say uh, so it, the recall is with this um, something that I found that was interesting is they estimated that it was 27,399 motorcycles. Um, estimating that exact and weird of a number I thought was kind of interesting. Um, we will put a, disc, um, a list of the bikes that are affected in the description below of this video here. We want to make sure that we get you guys the information. So the big question is, is obviously for anyone that has one of these bikes, is what is going on? And I don't want to make this a scary thing because it's, it's really kind of not. Um, Continental went through, they did some uh, testing. They did a lot of endurance testing on tires fitted from the factory, and it revealed that you could get cracks in the tread slightly longer than 3 16 of an inch. So that is one of those things where it is just barely out of spec from what it is. So it's not like we're ripping through half the tread here thinking, uh-oh, this is gonna this is gonna be bad. As of this point, there have been no property or injury claims that either KTM, Husky, or even Continental are aware of. So they're getting out in front of this problem. Obviously, with the way tire things have happened in many countries before, they want to make sure, especially with it being motorcycles, that there's never an issue for anyone with this. So those cracks that I mentioned in the tread they found did not go into the carcass. So the tire's still going to hold air. The tire's still going to hold its form. It just may peel off some tread, which obviously is a it's always kind of inconvenient to have to stop on side of the road, go back and grab your tread. Um, nonetheless, they are expecting to send out letters to 27,399 people starting September 19th. There is information on uh, Continentals, on KTMs and on Husqvarna's websites if you're concerned. But it's always a good reminder whether you have these tires on your bike or not. Go out, take a peek, make sure everything's in good shape, and go twist the throttle, which is what we should probably be doing here later, right? I mean, so, I mean, <laughs> are, are, uh, what do you think with this, Jackie? I mean, I think it's a good move by Continental, KTM, and Husky to be like, look, it's a small oh, thing. Gosh. It's just barely out of spec. Yeah. We're going to get in front of it. No, no, they have to do that. It's a safety issue. It's yep. very real. Uh, it, it was very, very smart to get in front of it. I never ding companies for issuing recalls because it's, I love the trans. I love the transparency of it. I would way rather high five a company for admitting there was Correct. a problem. They found out about it. Bring your stuff back to the dealer. Let us fix it. Let us swap it out. Let us do our work. It just builds goodwill and it's transparency. And I think that yep. I think that every every consumer should be sympathetic and understanding that that is where they're coming from and that you know mistakes happen things happen global supply chain issues the past handful of years also have made new factories in new places with new people and new training and new supply chain and there's going to be a couple little hiccups out here and things are just yep. going to have to be addressed and we all just have to roll with it and with that wow, parting phrase that i'm going to say that's my job <laughs> i thought it was one. that's my job <laughs> I had to sneak a little dad joke in here for you. Um, so Thank in you. next week's episode, and then in next week's episode of Where's Waldo, I'm going to be live streaming live from Mexico City for next week's show. So make wow. sure you tune in. You are not going to want to miss it. Thanks again for watching, everybody. As always, thank you for clicking, liking, and sharing all of our videos. You can watch all of our previous shows. They live out here forever on the internet on our YouTube and Motorcycle and Power Sports News Facebook pages. Have an awesome week, and I'll see you next week.